Awesome. Thanks everyone for joining the Cosmos SDK community call, the one and only. Um, we have a few things on the agenda today. Uh, so just wanted to give everyone an update on the epics that we are working on. Uh, the sprint theme for the next sprint alongside the epics that are ongoing. We have a quick question for auto CLI. And then we have a demo from uh, Informal and the MBT testing team on their tool called Atomcraft. And if we have time after that, um, then we can uh, go along with uh, the refunding of fees uh, issue that uh, Robert opened um, and also uh, Dave opened, I think, back in 2017 or 2018. Um, and then the last thing I, is going to be a far fetch, but if we're able to make it kind of like a, a refresher on what ADR33 is, this kind of like name has been floating around for the past couple of weeks in the ecosystem and just i think a lot of people have joined since that was written we have a lot of learnings from them and so i think a quick refresher on that could be useful um so to kick it off um i wanted to so to kick it off i'm just going to do a quick run through of the epics being worked on so recently we did a big focus on testing and kind of isolation of modules so um we actually completed rewriting all unit tests to use mocks to separate them from other modules. We are about 60% done with rewriting all CLI tests. Uh, had an uh, integration test really intertwined with our CLI test, and so we're separating those as well. Um, the param module deprecation is around 90% done. We're missing one final PR to be merged. Um, and we're about 75% done with app wiring. Matt just added the GoMod to the to SimApp, and so now we can uh, really start diving in. Um, but the catch there is uh, we most likely will not spin out modules till after the next release, which we have named Twilight as the final release as one large SDK. Uh, the next sprint themes um, that we're focusing on is um, the CLI test and return non CLI test into proper integration test. Um, I don't fully understand the question, Robert. Um, do you yeah, yeah. Just thanks, Marco, for okay. the update. I mean, like these tests are really great to see like updates around it. So, like, really, really thanks. Um, yeah, I just wanted like to. I didn't like follow that. So. Um, just wanted like to, to get more info about it. Is it like you're rewriting the tests and like applying some new, I don't know, new framework there? Or you are just like, you know, rewriting them that those tests are, I mean, less CLI tests, more proper integration tests? So we, we are, we're actually separating. What we discovered is our CLI tests were really intermingled, intermingled with the integration tests. And so we pulled the integration tests because they were actually like integration slash end to end tests. We pulled that out into a testing folder. Um, and the CLI tests are written as unit tests of the CLI interface. And so they test um, that uh, flags are called correctly and everything. And then the next scope of work uh, that we're planning on is uh, really diving in into end-to-end -end testing and into a proper integration testing. Um, and in that realm, we will uh, be looking towards like Atomcraft, IPC test, and other tooling for end-to-end -end testing, integration testing. Um, we haven't discussed in depth um, there's the current approach, um, but I believe uh, there are possible better ways to do it or cleaner ways to do it and make it more ergonomic for users like yourselves to use those integration tests and use that um, frame, uh, framework to build and write integration tests. Um, does that make sense, Robert? Yeah, amazing, yes. I mean, yeah, I was like talking about this test for like a few years already, so <laughs> that's uh, something that, I mean, we never had the time to do it, and uh, yeah, yeah, that we, definitely, we definitely will. Sorry, guys. This, this will definitely improve, like overall. I think like, the work of all the teams. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, we we kind of decided to bite the bullet and just do it, um, just because we wanted to bring assurance to the ecosystem that everything is sufficiently tested. Um, so to just go to the sprint theme. Um, the, the store package. So what we discovered in uh, in the work of uh, ADR40 and also just in general stores and issues that have been popping up across the ecosystem is the store package is not well defined. There's actually not a spec for it. We don't understand the semantic guarantees and the safety guarantees that are entirely being made there. Um, there's like assumptions being made. And so we just want to, um, so Bez and Facundo are diving into writing a spec of the store package 
and uh, Facundo is also going to be working on different parts of the store package in order to make sure that those guarantees are met for the end users until we migrate to something else. The next one is ABCI 1.0 integration. So I did a switcheroo, and so ABCI plus um, plus. I kind of we kind of threw a different name. So ABCI 1.0 is the prepare and process proposal, and we are doing the integration there with AppSide Mempool. Matt and John Carlo are leading that effort. Um, Deterministic queries, this is something that came up in the Cosm Wasm issue and in the last community call. So uh, Amari and Atish are leading that effort um, and they've already started on that. And they're gonna start with a focus on auth, um, bank and staking as those are the highest requested for deterministic queries. Um, we're starting off a uh, effort of developer UX. So. Um, Julian and Lakita are doing some user interviews on how it is to work with the SDK, how it is to build with the SDK, and kind of like what are some learnings and things that people would want to change. Um, Julian's reaching out to people right now, um, and so you will probably see a message from him to set up a call and uh, just discuss how good or bad the SDK dev UX is. Um, the other part is auto CLI. So auto CLI is actually um, more or less implemented. Um, we just want to, uh, so CLI v2 or auto CLI as we want to call it, is not actually auto gen. It doesn't generate your code, but it uses more so the protobuf reflection. And it will um, in real time, like uh, allow you to generate your CLI instead of having to write it by hand. Um, and so uh, Aaron is leading that effort. Um, and there's a couple of questions that we have um, in the next, uh, in the next section, um, Dave is preparing for takeoff in the background. Um, so quick question in regards to, uh, so, so before I switch to that, uh, before I switch to that, just wanted to double check, how do people feel about those items? Um, is there anything that you guys feel is missing? Um, anything that uh, we should shift a focus to? I'm going to take silence as the SDK is doing the best job ever. Um, so I'm going to go with that. Uh, so the quick question from our end is um, related to the auto CLI. Uh, so there's kind of the question posed from, posed from Aaron is basically there's the option to do to add it to proto definitions. There's the option to do a go definition of the CLI to be uh, generated. And there's the option of a YAML definition. Um, so uh, just wanted to see kind of like what people prefer, if they prefer a Go definition, kind of the team already felt that adding it to the protofiles kind of will bloat the protofile um, and make it somewhat unreadable. And so uh, we kind of wanted to give the option of either writing it in Go or in YAML. Um, and so Aaron already put together a quick example of a possible approach. Um, feel free to comment and um, leave suggestions, but quick, uh, stay silent if you're for YAML. Say, uh, say something if you want a more Go, if you want a Go definition for generating or for using auto CLI. I prefer I Go. Sh I should also say that um, <laughs> the current, this approach in this PR would actually work for Go too. You can, just you can choose kind of like you can with app config so it's not either or necessarily okay perfect um wasn't aware of that but then yeah just uh go to the um go to the pr leave a comment leave any suggestions um as aaron as aaron and i and i just kind of mentioned this is kind of a demo to show what's possible or to show a possible approach um, so if you feel like something is missing or um, you'd want to see something, feel free to comment on the PR. Um, so I actually got through the first three sections a lot faster than I thought. Um, do we have any questions on the first three sections? Or Aaron, is there anything you want to touch on for auto CLI? No, I think that that's basically it. And I think, you know, in I think we have a bit more alignment, at least internally. So um, hopefully this is an approach that people like. 
Amazing. Um, so yeah, so I guess we can get started with the Atomcraft demo. Um, uh, Tenzin, do you wanna take it away? Yes, thank you. So I have prepared a little presentation to make it easy to follow. Mm. Please let me know if it's... Does it show for you? Looks good for me. Okay, great. So thank you for the invitation. Uh, so I'm Tesnim from the MVT team for modern based testing. Uh, today we are going to present Atomcraft for Cosmos, an end-to-end -end testing framework for Cosmos SDK application. The goal of this work and why we are here is to try to answer the question on how can we strengthen development and testing practices across Cosmos community and IBC blockchains. So I will start with a little introduction about the context and the approach with Atomcraft. Then Andre is going to present a little example with the bank transfer that we have done for this demo. We want also to discuss towards uh, integration of regression testing for SDK. We have been working on the Odzi module. Uh, it's a starting point, so it opens up discussion and I hope collaboration to go further. If we have time, we will be happy to have a question and answer uh, session with thinking about how to do next steps. For the context, uh, as you know, Informal is conducting audits for several uh, Cosmos-based projects. Uh, and it's a really good source of knowledge for us to see the practices of projects and the problems they face. And we have seen here, I'm pointing up, out some of the problems that we have seen and why we have been working on Atomcraft. So for a typical uh, blockchain project, there is a white paper but generally it's incomplete because it's the starting of the project so it doesn't has have all the the protocol specification uh which is missing because the white paper is not the protocol specification Don't generally it's missing and there is thousands of line of code and go or in go or rest uh that are really time consuming to go through to find uh security problems and since it's huge, uh, it's, it's error prone. Uh, regarding the testing approaches, uh, they are, of course, manual, so very tedious. And generally, there are fixed inputs. So there are problem of coverage. When the inputs are, are fixed for the tests, the coverage is missing. And also some corner cases might be not thought about. Regarding maintenance, uh, it's if there is code changes of new functionalities, it's difficult to detect what tests to, to, to change. And also it takes a lot of time to rewrite them again. So for that, we have been developing Atomcraft as an in-house tool for us to, to better do better audits. And we thought, why not uh, using this tool as uh, for Cosmos SDK uh, in general to, 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 to bring better testing uh, to, to, the, to the SDK and thus for the Cosmos uh, SDK projects. So the main objective is to automatic generation and execution of test uh, suites. Here we have the Cosmos framework, which is um, uh, composed of different modules that are interconnected together in some way. Uh, what we need to take from that is a specification. So we will be looking at documentation when, when a real specification is missing. What we do is we look at uh, the code, what the, the, the documentation that there is there, and we create what we call a model from the specification who brings all the behavior of, of, of the module. We also write invariants. We define invariants that are correctness criteria that must hold when executing the, the framework or when there is some changes that are uh, introduced. And from those models and invariants, we automatically generate 
uh, hundreds of tests, traces uh, that are combinations of how we can guarantee that invariance holds. When those tests are automatically generated from a model and invariant, they are run over a test net uh, given some reactors, which is a little framework in order to map a generated trace to an execution over the test net, and then it can generate reports to see if the tests are holding or, or not. So we are trying to build a tool uh, which is user friendly uh, by by introducing uh, some command lines for user to uh, to know what 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 uh, to how to use and better interact with it depending on the concern. Uh, the first thing is modeling, like setting like importing a model and generating a trace, uh, writing the reactor, setting up a chain, but as we discussed uh, with Cosmos SDK people and Cosmos Hub, it was nice to have a push button tool that enables to run uh, automatically the test over the test net. And this is what we have done. So once the setup are there, we are doing the model once, the environment are set, we generate the test. And our objective for the first objective is enabling uh, to run those tests automatically when we are, have a new PR or a new release and to detect, to, to look at the report if everything is running okay or not. So for the use cases today, we have the bank transfer example. It's to show a little bit the automation and the coverage. We are going to go through a little, all the, all the, 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 um, the methodology of using Atom Crab, like what's the model, what's our, how the invariants look like, how do we write a reactor? Do we set up a test net and execute those tr those tests? And how what are what how the results look like? But towards SDK regression testing, especially with Odzi, we have prepared some work for Cosmos integration, where the Odzi module and reactors are set up. We have we 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 are ready to generate uh, a lot of traces. We are going to see some trace exploration today. And we want to, to, to work together towards what a regression test suite look, look like. When are we okay with, with the test suite and how we can integrate them? What we are going to show today, we, you can find them on informal systems GitHub as Atomcraft Cosmos with the use cases, which is ready to use for Cosmos. And we also have a repository with Atomcraft, which is the, the core um, a tool that is configurable and can be used for other use cases. We are, for example, looking at Cosmosm smart contracts verification, and it could be used for other projects. So now I'm going to 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 give the hand to Andre to to start with the bank transfer example. Yes, yeah, thanks, Tessin, for explaining the theory. Now oh, let's try to dive into the practice a bit. Okay, wait a second. I, I need to set up my sharing of my screen. Well, Andre, I think, has some problems in setting up <laughs> the demo. Do you have any questions uh, or thought? Was it clear from now before we jump on to more uh, details uh, around uh, yes. oh, the demo? I, I think, um, I, yeah, I think the <laughs> Bucky, uh, I think the biggest question is kind of like, what is a reactor in this case? Um, yeah. But I think we'll see that in the demo. Yeah, I think you will see it. But if to answer the question, since we are generating a lot of traces from a model, there are 
we need to 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 execute the traces over the test net so to to execute them over the test net we need transactions real transactions with addresses and uh, wallets etc so the reactor is is a mapper from a trace to real execution it's a translator of a trace to an execution with the transaction of a testnet so it's done it's like a frame an api to 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 access the testnet but it's uh, it enables to automatically generate the transactions from traces that doesn't have like inputs of uh, addresses wallets etc real uh, stuff That makes sense. Can you see my screen? Yes. yes. OK, good. <laughs> I'm sorry for the initial problems here. So uh, let's dive into the code a bit. Here we have the bank module from Cosmos SDK, right? And in particular, this send coins function. Uh, there, is, there are a number of manual tests written for this function and in particular let's try to focus you know it's it's actually a lot of tests it's one 1700 lines of code in this test file let's dive into one particular test uh what we see here we see here a particular scenario which first creates a couple of accounts creates a couple of coins then tries to some 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 transfers some should should fail some should succeed but you see that everything is fixed here right it's like it it's a fixed amount of coins fixed accounts you know fixed order of execution all that things now those tests are absolutely necessary you know to get confidence that your code is working so those unit tests that, that just give developer confidence but it's as this name was pointing out, it's quite you know tedious to write those and they don't actually provide you a proper coverage. Right? For example, uh for testing for, for sending coins between two accounts, there is essentially only this test that you know, this single you know function that tests this functionality. There are others that that send other types of sends and so forth. Uh, there is a question about which Cosmos SDK version. I'm not sure. One, one of the latest, but I don't don't know precisely. Um, yes, and also it's difficult to understand a bit what's happening here, right? It's it's just a lot of concrete code which is scattered throughout the test. Now let's take a look how we propose to uh, approach this. So what you see here, those are tests. Tests in TLA plus. Now don't be scared with TLA plus, okay? Uh, there are, let's say, two kinds of TLA plus. One is TLA plus for writing uh, the models themselves. In particular, this is a model for which models. You're, yep. you're, you're still showing the VS code of, uh, oh, of the Keeper really? test profile. It's still Go, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, with with Google Meet, it's a bit difficult. I'm used to Zoom. A window. Okay. Can you see now TLA Plus? Yep. Okay. Good. 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 Yes. So those are the tests I am talking about, right? Compared to what we've seen in Cosmos SDK. This is actually a test. Uh, so, okay, this is not a test. This is a test. What this test tells? Just generate me any execution, which is up, which which is exactly three steps. From this, from this test assertion, and and this is a TLA plus that actually the developer needs to to write, right? But this is that is simple enough. We have, of course, the TLA plus model itself, which models models the the transfers. It's actually also not quite complicated. You know, it's 100 lines of TLA plus, but it's a bit more complicated than, than this one. But this is really simple. So I imagine, you know, like anyone can just write this, right? And from that, we can generate uh, tests which are like that. So let me show you, for example, 
this one. And this is this is an automatically generated test. So it starts with some initial state where Alice and Bob have some some coins which are pretty you know big amounts, and no one else has any any coins. Then let's hide this one. In the next step, what we do, we try to send these coins, 100 atom, one one and 300 atoms, uh, from Alice to Dave. And we expect this to fail because the denom is duplicate. In the yet the next step, we send those things from from if to if, and it's it's go it's going to fail because there are insufficient funds. And finally, here we are going to send from Bob to Eve a big number of atoms and three muons. And this is going to succeed. So the important point here is that all of that is automatically generated again from, from this test assertion. Right? We can go further. We can write tests like I want to see an execution where I have a success, or I want to see an execution where there is an error because of there are duplicate denominations and so forth. We can go further. So this gets a bit more complicated, but still easy enough. So I want to see an execution from which all funds are drained. So the user has some funds, but they're drained in a single step, right? From that, Assertion we can also execute. Uh, we can also generate executions, you know, and many of them actually. We can generate this execution, which says, "Okay, Alice." So in the initial state, Alice had many funds, and then we it just sends everything to Dave, right? And she she doesn't have any anymore. Then there are other such assertions. You know, you can you can say that first uh, my send I should have an unsuccessful send here, which should fail with insufficient funds, and then it should succeed. But it should have the same sender in both cases and the same denomination in both cases. Things like that. Um, yeah, and you can also, you know, have things like that. Just generate me uh, an execution which contains all possible, like four four different outcomes. This is also pretty easy to to express. Any questions so far? Uh, so, like line sixty six tests insufficient success. Um, yeah. So this is like a like a single test scenario, but it generates multiple. Scenarios. It generates multiple. I can generate essentially any number of different scenarios from that. So if we look here, test insufficient success. So, so what I'm showing you, by the way, is from Atomcraft Cosmos Repo. So, it can generate one particular scenario like that. You see, we have insufficient funds here, and then and then a success here, and it's from Alice. It sends atoms, and in the second case, it's also from Alice, and it again sends, sends atoms. So all those constants that you see here, they are just uh generated by the tool automatically to satisfy this declarative specification of the trace that you want to see you know so, so, yeah. so it's like one test with multiple scenarios yes okay. and there is another one and yet another one you know like yeah. here it's like 10 different scenarios that satisfy the same declarative specification okay yeah uh yes those, those are about tests and now, like, if you zoom out a bit, uh, I still see my TLA plus. Uh, 
Are, are you gonna uh want the one question is uh, yep. on reactors is that like later in the presentation or what uh around reactors is uh, that later in the presentation or right so let me let me show you um right so you have this trace right that that i have shown you this is an abstract trace it's an idea format then what's called the reactor is this piece of Python code. It says, okay, if I receive the initial uh, state, I initialize my blockchain and I set account balances, right? Or I receive this send, send then I create a transaction. In that case, it's, it's multi-center, should be just a single send, doesn't matter actually. And then I broadcast a transaction, and then I just check that the account that I observe are the ones that I have that I expect. So those balances you receive, they they come from the trace that you gen that you have generated automatically, but you you access them just as any other variable, right? So balances action action outcome. And the test net is the actual test net. We can run. Uh, we can one run one, a trace. Like that. Of, yeah. One kind of a random thought um, that actually occurred to me earlier today. Um, so it's like this is written in Python, um, and I think you're using like a Luna test net Python, whatever. Um, uh, have you guys thought of like building it on top of like uh, the IBC test um, stuff from um, informal to like make it right. Golang uh, from from Strangelove to make it um, like Golang specific? Uh, so we are looking at different ways, right? Um, yeah. So here we are looking at different ways of integrating. So what you see now it's really the local test net. So it picks up the binary that you have. In that case, it's Cosmos SDK CMD binary, spins nodes. Uh, you can configure what's used in a file like that. You know, you say, I want three validators. I want so many accounts. You know, I use this binary and other parameters. So it's, it's really end-to-end -end test. Uh, it it runs the real thing, right? If you want to have more like integration test cases or unit test cases, then we need we do need to plug in directly at the lang language level, right? Like be it be it Go or Rust. Yeah, I, I think I'm asking a different question. Yeah. Okay. Um, like uh, yeah, Andre, maybe. maybe Marco, I can give a quick demo of IBC test sure. to kind of show let's, how it works. Let's just uh, uh, because... let's just quickly wrap up this demo. I just want to make sure yeah. that the uh, informal has enough time to like complete um, what they wanted to do, demo. Um, but yeah, we we can come back to that later on. Yeah, we've and we've talked about Jack. We've talked about using the IBC test, and I think the team is starting to look yeah. into that. Um, yeah, to plug yeah, yeah. In. yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah. because what, what you guys have is all the model-based testing stuff and the test case generation. And I think what we have is the much better infrastructure for spinning up the chains and also manipulating that in Go. And I think that there's a, a very clean way to integrate both of these things together into like the best test framework. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, Bucky and I have talked about, talked about this. I've also talked about this with Zarko and Adi um so anyway sorry andre i'll let you finish this uh yeah so i think i i want to show you one more thing before i hand to ernan uh, this so th this is can you see it yep okay this is this is just you know the readme of our atom craft tool i i will just use it i will just use it to explain you like the concept concepts behind it, right? So Atomcraft is a CLI tool. It has these commands. You may say that, you know, it has two faces. One face is turned to someone like a security auditor. You may think about this as informal, right? Someone, for example, who can write TLA plus specs. And they create these models, you know, execute some initial tests. But the other phase of Atomcraft is turned to a Cosmos SDK developer. 
And what we provide for Cosmos SDK developer is a functionality to easily integrate this into your CI. So Atomcraft project is simultaneously a PyTest project. And you can just take it at any point in time, put it into the CI, run PyTest on it, and it will work. You don't need actually any Node TLA plus for that. You just have those traces, which are pretty abstract, which are generated from TLA plus. But after that, you just forget about TLA plus. You run it in, in your CI, and you have your you know, test suite. That's what I wanted to tell you. Yeah. Questions? Um, yeah. Um, was there a question, Mark? No, I was just going to say it looks um, super cool. And like the, the super nice thing is like how it generates tests. Um, but also just wanted to touch on that, like the the tests you were showing before are, are unit tests. Um, they, they aren't the integration and intent tests we currently have in the SDK. Well, yes, I know. I know. You mean the Cosmos SDK test? Like yeah. The, the Go test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I know. I know. Um, yeah. So I think. Um, okay, uh, so Ernan, maybe you could present something about OZ. Yeah. Um, thanks. I will show you quickly uh, the same <clears throat> tool for what we did for OZ. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Can you yeah, okay, it's the same process. Uh, we have a model for OTC, and we can generate traces in the same way. Uh, um, well, if you know, this is just a, a way of generating tra uh, uh, traces for OTC. This is just says that uh, we have two states that we want to generate. One state is an expire. Uh, we want to ex expire a grant, and this, the second one is to execute the grant. So basically, well, I won't go into the details of the, the module, but <clears throat> it's the same uh, concept. We have a, a, a sequence of, of steps uh, that uh, we let send messages to, to the module. Uh, in this case, um, the model is written in the same way as, is, as the code is written. So anyone familiar with the code would be able to understand what is happening here. So the event uh, that is, is being sent is, is a request to uh, a grant. And we'll say uh, we'll, we'll ask for an authorization from a uh, grantor A3 to A2, and this is the grant for we delegate. And uh, this, uh, um, well, we, we can the model also calculates what would be the expected result. So uh, in this case, the result will be okay, and uh, uh, we'll 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 also uh, calculate uh, what's happening inside the, the, the server. What what are the the or the list of uh, uh, authorizations that were granted, like uh, this this one here. Um, so, except for a few, few minor details, as I said, this is a mostly a one-to-one -one map from uh, the code to the to to the model. So, this is the same field names uh, for example. For example. Um, and in this case, uh, yeah, this is a trace that would were well first uh, just request a grant and then. Uh, what happens? Another request grant, uh, again, expiration, some grant is expired, and then the request, request to execute. This is what's generated from the uh, this this property here that I showed you before. As this is just uh, one of the one that, uh, of the hundreds that you can generate. This is just an example. And yeah, uh, the same as before, we can uh, run the, the 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 reactors, and uh, this will execute the same. The, this um, trace I show here in the testnet. Um, yeah, just um, also to add uh, to what we said before. Uh, well, we are working also on um, on a tool to uh, to uh, mock uh, tender mint, so we don't uh, have to uh, wait like a few seconds to start the testnet every time to send the messages. That will be much more more faster in this case. Uh, this is, well, yeah, I, I will stop sharing. Um, this is what I wanted to show you. Yeah. 
Do you have any questions? Awesome. Um, do you, uh, yeah, I guess like my, my question is more are surrounded around um, just going and reading um, that TLA spec just to see what it looks like. Um, any questions from anyone else in the audience? If not, then um, let me just quickly check. But we can quickly. I'm sorry. Go sorry, ahead. I've got a quick question. Uh, does this re require any uh, changes within the SDK itself? Any hooks or anything like that? Or is it purely external? No, we just, we just use the binary as it is. Any, okay. any Cosmos SDK compatible binary will work. Okay, and that would include if there's like extra extra add-ons in there. Yeah, so I think we okay. have tested it with things like Juno. Um, Rana will remind me what what else we've tested. Yeah, like Juno and then and then Cosmosm. Yeah, uh, Cosmos SDK and then Osmosis at some point, but we usually just test it on this kind of native uh, Cosmos SDK modules. Okay, great. If you're using the binary, that that covers yeah. a lot of ground. And guy, 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 of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. So the OD work is is a primary work to see all the tests that have been generated. What makes sense to to maybe. Um, put in place a test suite that could be executed as regression tests whenever there is a new PR or a new release. We are eager to have feedback with the value that it brings. We are doing continuous development so as it's user friendly. So it we will appreciate to see what are what we can enhance. What next step like before like jumping into developing new features or enhancement would like to take into account the needs and what's, how, how uh, it could be useful for you and easy to, 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 to take uh, in hand. So this is uh, something that is important for us for the next steps. Uh, Amazing. Um, does, uh, so I guess like, yeah, just to continue on, um, if you're, wanting to experiment with this in your own application, then definitely hit up Informal. Um, I know they're eager to like uh, build and uh, ideally we can explore how to use it within the SDK for exactly what you were talking about, uh, Tesnim with and 10 testing, regression tests and whatnot. Um, quickly, uh, Jack, do you wanna give the demo you wanted to show about IBC test? Uh, one quick question. Yeah, for sure. Like, yeah. Uh, I mean, go ahead. So, yeah, what's the go best way to follow up? Like directly, I mean, we are connected somehow through various channels, but what's the let's say, best way to follow up? Uh, you can just write us on, I don't know, contact us on Slack or I mean, Do you have like a Discord <laughs> channel or something, or like we need to connect with like a Slack? What's the best way, like, you know? Slack is the easiest for us. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you also, like, send some kind of, uh, I mean, like, the project you did, a like, GitHub link, or? Yeah, it's in the, in the notes, in okay. the meeting notes. Thank you. Awesome. Jack? Uh, all right. Yeah. So uh, I don't have a prepared presentation. I'm going to run through this fairly quickly, um, but also happy to give a more in-depth uh, run through of this. Uh, there's also a lot of uh, um, documentation and examples within the repo. So <laughs> just at a high level, um, you know, I thought that that was a great diagram of who the intended audience was for Adam Craft. So our intended audience was slightly different. You know, we started this IBC test project with the intent of creating a matrix of all of the different SDK chains and all of the different relayer implementations um, so that we can ensure that IBC is conformant across all of those. 
And also Strange Love has been doing a lot of work with folks like Composable and uh, starting uh, in Penumbra and we're starting with Near soon to do non-standard IBC integrations and being able to test those in a full end-to-end -end manner is the only way we can be sure when they go to market. So as a part of that work, we ended up building um, on a ton of prior work, but a very capable network simulation uh, tooling for Cosmos that's based on Docker and enables some use cases that that aren't uh, that aren't kind of available elsewhere. And you know, I, I see Dave and the Osmosis team on there. They also, based on some of the work that we had done on SOM, built a similar framework. But it allows for things like testing state sync or testing various upgrade handlers, and is much less focused on sort of fuzzing the state space than it is focused on giving developers a nice Go API from which to be able to write very declarative tests. Now, you could easily use AtomCraft in this to generate some of those uh, much deeper tests into the different modules, but what we have built is much more a repeatable end-to-end -end test framework. So let me run through uh, the upgrade test so that you guys can kind of see how that works. And I think that that will be a good way to sort of discuss it. Okay, can you guys see my screen? Yep, yep. All right, yes. great. So this is an example of an upgrade test. And as you see here, we're updating Juno from V6 to V.8 and uh, it's specifying what the upgrade handler is here. Um, there's a lot more documentation on how this setup works, but we're using some standard Docker files. Now, in a situation like the Cosmos SDK, the way that we would set the CI up is the Docker image gets built first, and then we use the image based on the commit within the testing. And this way you can sort of set up these standard integration tests. Um, Again, this is there's a lot of setup here that, that is a bit boilerplate, and we can strip that out in the SDK specific version because this is specifically to test, say, spin up three different chains, give them relayer links, and be able to integration test complex IBC uh, applications, which is the other major uh, application for this work. Um, you're able to fund accounts, sort of an arbitrary number of accounts. You do this directly in Go as opposed to doing it in uh, a DSL. Um, do, 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 do. Um, and we would create a software upgrade proposal. All of the validators would vote on that proposal. We're going to wait for some blocks. Um, after the the chain is halted, we're going to bring down the nodes and then restart them with the new version and ensure that the chain comes up cleanly. And I can just go ahead and run this. Oh, <laughs> I already ran it, so it just uh, did it. So um, I can show you how long it took, but it's 121 seconds. Um, so relatively fast, right around two minutes for a full upgrade test. I, I think we get around uh, 20 to 50 blocks in this. Let me grab a different example here. Um, you can run the state sync test. Um, and this would this is a similar test where we're spinning up a Gaia cluster and there are uh, um, and each of the nodes is enabled to state sync other nodes. Um, and uh, then we spin up a new node and test state sync with that. Um, one thing that we've done here is we've worked really hard to make it so that we're only using the functionality that's exposed by the individual binaries. So all of this chain spin up happens using the binary itself and doesn't dip into any of the underlying Go APIs. And in this way, we can test multiple different versions of the SDK simultaneously within one testing environment, which is a huge, uh, huge benefit in one of the things that the upgrade test really shows off. Um, this is really important for upgrades primarily, and especially if we're trying to have multiple different versions of Cosmos SDK in the same environment. 
uh, you don't run into Go import cycles. Um, so we, we have the chain started, and now uh, we're waiting for a few blocks before we can state sync a node. Um, we'll see that that node start state syncing here in just a second. But um, this is a, it's kind of funny because the, the informal team and the straight sub team, I think, started working on these frameworks at, at a similar time. Uh, but we, we've come at it from different directions. The direction that we've come at it is much more from a DevOps and uh, you know repeatability perspective, and, and trying to get uh, trying to get these IBC pieces tested, and much less focused on the state, uh, much less focused on the like exercising the full state space piece. And the informal team is like come at this from a formal verification perspective, and it's much less focused on the. Uh, the sort of DevOps and upgradability and the, the multi-chain piece of it. So I think that these two things are like really, really complementary and wanted to just get a quick chance to show this off. But in the repo, and I'll post the repo here, Strange Love Ventures IBC test. Um, we've got a number of examples. We've also got, uh, so like the ones that we have is Cosmos Chain Upgrade IBC test. So this tests IBC compatibility on both sides of a chain upgrade. Um, Interchain queries, we're developing some IBC application protocols and we write tests for them in this. State sync test, the packet forward test. Um, this is a good example of uh, testing three chains in a complex interchain flow between those. Um, and if you go peek in the docs, there's uh, documentation on writing custom tests, uh, how all of the different sort of objects within the IBC test framework that are importable work, how to fit them together, and how to, how to write your own tests here. The IBC Go team has already adopted this to do most of the testing on new features within IBC Go. Um, and we're working actively with a handful of teams to do uh, end-to-end -end tests for complex IBC stuff with this. But the functionality that we've built directly into the Cosmos piece of this is broadly reusable for doing complex end-to-end -end testing for the SDK as well. So wanted to just share it with this team and, and uh, hopefully there's a way that we can work together to help bring this work into the SDK. Thanks, Marco. Awesome. Thank you so Thank much. You. Um, Thanks for sharing. Interesting. I think we can discuss together maybe too to a proof of concept how we can combine both methodology and see. Yeah, I think that the, it, because this works in a container, I think we could put Atomcraft in a container and Atomcraft has the ability to generate the transactions. So the Atomcraft container would just need to know where the full nodes that it can run against are. And then we can write the equalities and go. And uh, it, uh, Based on the the looking that I've done at Atomcraft, the integration is very possible and should be fairly low lift, frankly. So, yeah, really excited to work with you guys on this, and, and I think that we both have some really key pieces here, and each of these has strengths that we can leverage to make the best testing framework, the best EDE testing framework for the SDK um, possible. Awesome, love it, love it, uh, love to see teams working together and coming together on the SDK community call. Um, so the next two bullet points are a bit of a larger discussion. Um, I'm not sure if it's worth starting them for the last four minutes. Um, so I want to let everyone off four minutes early and then uh, have a good weekend and see you in two weeks. And thanks, everyone, for the demo. Thank you, guys. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you.